Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Box. What's in the Box? What's in the Box? Repeat, John Doe has the upper hand. Today, we ain't got no box because I already opened the box and I pulled out what's inside. But a lot of you guys are gonna be mad stoked because, drum roll please. Cut! The ride along car's coming back. <gasps> are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. The Buds on Budget build is coming back. We have to do some upgrades. Not gonna lie, got a little discouraged. Didn't work the way I wanted. Was told I shouldn't get a 2.5. Got a 2.5 anyways. Again, you guys saw the deal. Couldn't pass it up. 2.5 is not the way. 3.0 is the only way to go. So, we're gonna get a 3.0 for it. And the other thing that wasn't working was the handbrake. Now that we're kind of figuring out exactly what's gonna make that car work a little better so that you guys hopefully didn't get a 2.5, now that we're learning what's working, hopefully you guys can follow along a little bit better and then we can actually get something that works. The car will drive and it will do things. It's just dumb slow, really hard to drive. A lot of fun because it's challenging. With that being said, I would like to throw a 3.0 in it because I drove one this weekend with the diff that I have in the car, which is a 364 now instead of the 346. But the 364 and a 3.0 seems to be the proper combination to make that car work great. Along with gutting, which we're gonna pull some interior out. I wanna leave it stock as much as possible, but we'll try to do like a nice clean gut, which I don't know how that's gonna work. But anyways, one of the things that wasn't working in the car was a handbrake, so what did I do? I called up the boys at Drift HQ. See, that's a million dollar song right there. They should uh, pay me for that one. But anyways, here it is. It is the pullback style handbrake that Drift HQ offers on their website. But there's something really cool about this handbrake. Now, I used this handbrake before in a car that we built for a company I used to work for. They wanted to build a drift car as a demo car. So I called up Drift HQ and I got a handbrake from them and we ended up putting it into that car. I also had another handbrake from them at one point from my boy Duarte, um, but that one I ended up allowing my buddy Frankie to get and put into his drift car because I had already had a handbrake handbrake in my car. The cool thing though is that I don't want to pull back style but with what Drift HQ and the way that they have designed this because those dudes are mad smart they made it to where you can actually flip the base of this and turn it into a pull up style. This is a pull back hydro meaning that you would be grabbing it from here and you're pulling it back to compress the cylinder, the master uh, cylinder here in order to send fluid to a caliper thus locking the rear wheels. Now you're pulling it back, so naturally pull up would mean that it's like a traditional handbrake where you're pulling up from the bottom. So you can actually flip these pins and turn this into a pull up, which allows you to put this into an OEM location, making it very, very, very nice. With that being said, this needs to be turned into a pull up style. Big shout out and love to the boys over at Drift HQ, Duarte, Cricket. Chris, Savio, Lynn, freaking love you guys. Thank you so much for always supporting me. Let's jump into flipping this into a pull up. All right, so here we are back at the Lev Rack bench. We got the overhead camera running, which I really like this thing. Uh, I think it gives a good view on all this and my FUPA. So let's convert this into a pull up style. First off, we're gonna slide the sleeve forward and kind of begin to loosen this rod so we can get some space then. So next we'll remove the master. And the reason that I'm taking the master off of the base is so that I can actually get the rod out to take apart all this other stuff. So really easy. We wanna unscrew this rod from the uh, heim here and unscrew the master from the base of the handbrake. It's just a number five Allen metric. When you're putting this back together in the configuration you want, probably a good idea to throw some uh, Loctite on here just so that you don't have silly issues with bolts backing off. The type of Loctite you want to use is going to be completely up to you if you want to use red or blue or orange or green or whatever one you want to use. Use it. Who cares what people say? Do what you want. Make sure your crap doesn't fall apart. All right. So next thing I'll do is I'll screw out the master from the handbrake. And then you're essentially to put it back together, you're just gonna repeat those processes the opposite direction. So there it is, master and stand. Now all we have is the base plate and the handle itself. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. The one thing I do really admire about this handbrake is it's very stout, 
the one that's in the pro car, I ended up taking these pins because they weren't designed as well. And I swapped them out for bolts so that I can kind of add a little bit of tension to these things. But this one here, which, and I mean the, the one that's in the car is a different, it's a different handbrake. The one in the pro car is a different handbrake than this one. But this one's designed really well. There's not a lot of play. There's not a lot of slop. You're not getting that weird side to side wobble or bad uh, connection between like the Himes and all the joints. All this stuff is really, really nice. Let's get this Heim out of here first because it needs to be flipped as well. So we have a, a C-clip pin and another C-clip on this side. We gotta take out one of them, I believe, so we can slide the rod out one side, flip the Heim, slide it back in. All right, this is gonna be a nice fun challenge because I don't have the right tools. If I did, this would actually be fairly easy to do. Mark the hell out of it because I, again, I don't have the right tool. So there's your C-clip. Let's see. Will it just slide out? Look, it's so tight. I think it needs a little bit of a. I think it needs a little bit of assistance. No way, it's that tight. It's actually that tight. All right, we'll leave that for now. It does need to get swapped around. We'll jump over to here, then we can get the handle off. Here we go. C clamp on the insides of these boys. Don't rocket ship these across the room. You don't want to rocket man those. It's my favorite flathead that I own. I don't know why. Is. Seems to always be able to get the job done. This, like I said, these things are freaking tight, dude. There we go. A little bit of persuasion. There you have it. All right, base plates out of the way. Now I need to get this out. So we're gonna split the difference in the uh, stress that we're gonna put on this. At least try, that's a pretty good setup there. That's actually a great setup. And then we'll just smack that pin and hopefully we can get it out without damaging the pin itself. There it goes, starting to walk. So I don't damage it too much. There it is. Well, that actually works out really good. I didn't actually get it to smack all the way through, which is perfect because I don't have to like line it back up and play that terrible game. Well, there it is. All right, let's get it back in. Perfect. This isn't as marred up as bad as you, you would think. Um, there's just junk on my hammer. It's making it look really bad. Okay, so now it's set up in a pull up style. So now the handbrake will operate like this instead of this. Does that make sense? Cool. Now we have to throw this hand the handle back into the base and we can move back to reassembling. All right, so again, these came off in the order that I want to put them back on in. So we'll slide this into the base and then we will take these two washers actually and we can throw these in here prior to any of that. Um, and these sleeves, sleeves look to be the same so they don't seem like they're side specific. If they are, I'll let you know. We'll find out together. But well, we can get this, get it started, insert it, boom. Take one of our C-clips, finish off this, this side of the build. Then we'll throw in this side. Seems to go together a lot easier than it comes apart. Boom, that's back together. Let's get these guys back on. This is where I think the difficulty is gonna come into play. Well, let's see if I can big brain it with a flathead. Fill the gap here, twist the handle. And just hook it down. 
to eclipse. Voila. Now for my next trick, I'll mount the master back and screw it on like such. Sometimes this rod spins inside the master, but because this is fairly new and the tolerances are pretty damn tight, you can almost spin it with the master, but you have to have, like, I'm pulling back on it so that I relieve the tension on the threads and all that to get it to spin in, but there it goes. Now it's spinning the master without the rod. Cool. And then we'll flip it over. Again, use whatever Loctite you feel works for you. I don't give a damn. Just don't have your crap falling apart at the track. Line up these holes. <laughs> Fill these bolts in real quick. Give them a little cinch. Remember, we're going into aluminum. It doesn't need to be crazy tight. Just nice snug. On top of that, lock tight. So now, what you can do is make some adjustments to your rod, and that'll dictate how high the handle sits. Along with getting the actual handbrake and the base and the master, you get this super gangster weld on base that essentially fits right underneath here. So you would throw this in your car, you throw a weld around it, you take those four screws out prior to doing that or after, whatever, I don't care how you do it. Weld it in, then you take these four screws and those will mount the master to the plate that is in the location that you want your handbrake to be in. Super dope that you can convert it and switch it around and make it exactly how you want. Again, huge shout out to Drift HQ for supplying us with this handbrake. One to show you guys, but also to shred with in the four door. So we'll be actually going, getting this plate mounted exactly where we want it, weld it in, and then we can throw the handbrake in. After the handbrake is in, then I'll jump into the plumbing, which we already placed a big order with our partners over at Phoenix. So that stuff should be here today, but for the time being, this is gonna be enough. After this, we'll jump into actually gutting the car and mounting it. Pretty sweet little setup here. Again, changing the, the angle of the handbrake, like right now, she's fairly low, but if I wanted this handbrake to be up, all I have to do is screw in this rod. So I'll do that real quick for you so you can see it. Pop this sleeve forward. Now you are gonna be limited to how far you can get this to screw up because of the length of the rod here and the depth of the heim. But don't forget kids, grinders exist. You can just cut the rod, sh essentially shortening the size of this shaft here. And then once that shaft would be cut to a shorter size, then you can get the handbrake to stand up a little bit higher. I feel like you can get plenty of adjustment out of it, but if for whatever reason it's mounted in a super awkward position, you can still cut it and make it higher. But if I was gonna throw this into my car, it would probably be realistically because there's interior and, and light switches and stuff like that in the 46 in this area, it'd probably be somewhere around there, um, which is pretty dope because then you still have a decent handbrake pull to pull up on. I really like this setup and again, Huge kudos to the boys that designed it and making it a flippable system. Works great, paired with a Willwood Master. This should be phenomenal. On the four door, because it is more of a budget build, we are not gonna be doing a dual caliper setup. This will be a pass-through system, meaning that there's a brake line that comes from the master to the rear, the rear calipers and goes into the master, which would be, entering would be here. So it'll be plumbed into here and then out of here to the back calipers. So the system will get cut in half when you go to press the brake pedal and you have this handbrake pulled up as well. The system on your pedal will feel a little funny. You'll get like a, a, half, a half pedal or a three quarter pedal type feel, but it's really not that bad. If you wanna do it super legit, they also sell the system with a master and then you can turn this into a dual caliper setup. But for me and my budget that, I'm, that I have with the car, the Bud's on budget, four seater beater, we're going with an inline system. So you have a dual caliper system and then an inline. This will be the inline. I believe on the website it's like a reservoir or an inline setup or something like that. But you can flip through the options and you can pick which one you want from Drift HQ themselves. Anyways, with all that being said, this is the configuration we're throwing in the car and I'm super stoked and thankful for the boys over at Drift HQ. Cricket, I love you. I like a, the Micah. Yeah, it's perfect. Oh yeah. Chris, I adore you. Joel, I want to spend the night with you. Duarte, adopt me. Okay, Lynn, convince him, please. 
Absolutely love you guys. Savio, we're running doors one day. One day I'll be out there. We'll be running doors for all those prize purses out there. Shout out to the boys over at Drift HQ and thank you for supplying us with some dope products that are customizable. Appreciate you boys. Stay safe. Hit them up. Get you a handbrake. I'll show you how to plumb it in the next video. Later boys.